Okay, let's go ahead and take a look at the derivatives of the reciprocal trig functions. Now, we of course know that the basis trig functions that we have are y is equal to cosine and y is equal to sine. And the reason why those are the basis trig functions is because all the other four trig functions are based upon those two. So, if we go ahead and take a look, say for example, at the reciprocal of the cosine, which is 1 over cosine, this function is going to be called the secant of x. If we go ahead and take the reciprocal of the sine of x, then we come out with the cosecant of x. And then we also know that y is equal to sine over x over cosine of x is equal to the tangent of x, and the reciprocal of that would be cosine of x over sine x, which is the cotangent of x. So, how do we go about finding the derivatives now of these reciprocal trig functions? Well, we know what the derivatives are for the basis trig functions. So, so long as we can go ahead and determine what the derivative is of these other four trig functions in its form that involves both the sine and the cosine, and being that we know all of the rules for differentiation, we should be able to come out with these derivatives for these particular trig functions other than sine and cosine of x. Okay, so here they are right here. All we want to do right now is let's go ahead and go through one of these. Uh, we've already done, I believe, the tangent of x. Let's just go ahead and take a look at the uh, derivative of the secant of x. So, if we go ahead and start off with y is equal to 1 over cosine of x, which of course is the secant of x, we can go ahead and rewrite that as the cosine of x, the negative 1 power. And by using the power rule and the chain rule, we can go ahead and say that that's going to be negative 1 cosine x to the negative 2 power times it by the derivative of the cosine of x, which is negative sine x. So if we go ahead and simplify that, then the negatives will cancel. We come up with sine x over cosine squared x. And now how do we come up with secant x tan x? Well, we just have to go ahead and rearrange this just slightly so that we have a denominator of cosine of x for both of these functions that are multiplied, uh, both of these fractions that are multiplied together. And you can very simply see that that's going to be secant of x, and that's going to be the tangent of x. Okay, so, very simply said, if you know how to take the derivative of your basis functions, your basis trig functions, and you know how to rewrite your original trig functions in terms of sine and cosine, and you remember the rules of differentiation, you should be able to go about coming out, you should be able to derive the derivatives of all of these other four trig functions as well. And I leave that as an exercise for you to take a look at. So there you go. The derivatives of reciprocal trig functions. Pretty straightforward. I don't see anybody having any particular problems with this particular section. So give it a shot, and we'll see you the next time. Bye-bye.